hello and welcome back to the KECC channel. I'm Rob and I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Today, we're jumping into some Entitled Parents. Before we start, did you know that KCC now has a shorts channel? Check out KCC Shorts listed at the top of the description down below for under one minute Ask Reddit questions and answers and short stories. Our first story today comes to us from Cookie Dog 800 Mom says that I can't get a higher paying job, all because I would move out. Let's jump right in. If you think the title is bad, just wait. This is more of a vent, so forgive me in advance. So my mom had insisted that I stay with her for my job during lockdown. It's still going on where I live. So I did and I regretted it, to the point that I'm losing more money than my job can pay me. I have a job at Amazon in their distribution center. Basically, I sort the packages to get to the customer's residence. I have the night shift, it sucks. I have mental health issues and night shift, plus stress from mom, plus the drive made me look elsewhere for work. I found a good job that pays more, about $8.80 more than what I make now. It's in the daytime, that's the best bit. That's where the problems start. So my current job has me drive 100 miles round trip and eats my gas and mileage like Pac-Man and his pellets. I get roughly $19 an hour, but the reason this is worse? Mom expects me to pay her $500 a week for rent. My paycheck is roughly $760. Take away $500 and I have $260 left. After making payments on my car, which is $180, I have $80 to pay for gas. Gas where I am is $398 a gallon. I use up nearly $60 to fill up from when the gas light turns on to full. So yeah, I need somewhere else. Now, my new job, which I start three days after writing this, is in the day and is remote. I can work from home as long as I have a computer of sorts, a smartphone, and internet. The job pays more, and my mother saw my text to my grandparents about it. Well, guess who decides to tear me a new one? If your guess was my entitled mother of a mother, you'd be right. Now, my mom doesn't take care of the house, at least since I came back. I had to vacuum, fix anything that breaks, mow the lawn, cook, and take care of my sister. That doesn't sound like an entitled mother. That sounds like you being a member of the household. I know that's what you're thinking. Well, let's put her back to the ways of the entitled mother. 1. Mowing the lawn has to be done on Fridays between 9 and 10 a.m. My night shift doesn't let out until 11.50, and even then, it's a 40-minute drive if there's no traffic. With traffic, I'd be lucky to be home before 2.30 p.m., so I get chewed out for not having it done then. Two, I can't get any sleep until I finish my chores. Now, I need to sleep from 5 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. so I can get enough sleep. She won't let me go to bed until well after 9 p.m. So on two and a half hours sleep, I have to drive 50 effing miles on a busy highway that's under construction, mind you. Three, I have no personal property. I have a phone that she bought me as a 17th birthday present. She is now handing me the bill for the darn phone. She bought me an iPhone XR, brand new for like $1,000. I got a military grade protector case and a shatterproof screen cover. She demanded that I turn off my passwords for all of my devices that I paid for. So aside from the $500 rent, I now have to pay $1,000 for a birthday gift to me. She adds $50 a week for interest. She has to read all my emails, texts, see all my contacts, hear every phone call on speaker, and can use my laptop as she likes. I had to purchase antivirus software after I got 9 on my laptop. She gets into my spam and clicks the links. You know, the, you want a free iPad, click here to receive it. I had to use money that I don't hardly have to purchase antivirus software that keeps the viruses off the system. 5. Any food that I buy, she eats instantly, claiming that it's her reward for raising me. 6. My Nintendo Switch that I bought and have a 5-year warranty on was sold to a pawn shop. It still had my login info, credit card, PayPal, about $259 in gift cards, and $412 in reward points, and an $89 512GB microSD card. My Switch was worth a lot and she sold it for $50. Yes, $50. But thank God that when they booted it up, they saw my contact info in the account settings. I got called asking why it was sold off with all that still on it. I told them that I didn't sell it and had a warranty for another three years on it. Well, I got it back without any hassle. The Switch itself was my purchase 
Everything else was family members sending me gift card after gift card for it. Needless to say, that new job is my ticket out of here. I put in my two weeks notice already, so I'm ready for the new job. I can pay her ridiculous fees and save up enough to get an apartment again to get away. I'm going no contact with her, not my sister, but her. Now seeing that this new job is better pay, and in the day when she's at her job, she decides that I have to stay with Amazon because I can't do remote work from her house. So apartment hunting I go. I got a car, but she holds the title deed. It's her car, but I'm shelling out hundreds a month so she doesn't have to pay for it. Well, guess who has to get a new car without her name on it? Me. I want to get out of this hellhole, but she's emotionally and mentally manipulative. She says that this new job isn't going to pay me this right off the bat. The paycheck is what management, HR, and I agreed upon. It's on my contract, and if they violate it, that's a hefty fine. She then tells me that those hours are fake. Once again, agreed upon and in my contract. 38 to 40 hours a week. Any more, and I get paid overtime. Now she's trying to get family members involved to get me to stay with Amazon. They all say she's crazy. Well, now I have her crazy friend group on Facebook that think I'm a minor. I can go grab a beer whenever I want. So yeah, she's mother of the year material. I hate her. I did a little bit of looking into OP's profile and I found out that they are an American, so drinking age there is 21 and they said they could go get a drink whenever they want. That means at 21 years old, they're still using a phone that's under their mother's name, still using their parents' car, and I think they're just relying on mom way too much. It's time to cut the ties. Your mom is a leech. You don't need that kind of negativity in your life. You're making enough to get your own apartment and pay your own expenses. Do it. Do me a quick favor, have a look down below the video. If that subscribe button's still red, it means you're not actually subscribed to the KCC channel. Please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. Our next story today comes to us from B2UTYYO. If you guys know what that says, let me know. Entitled mother tries to extort my family for free childcare through playdates and then puts me in danger. Let's jump right in. So this happened when I was six to seven years old and I've only realized how entitled this mother was. In first grade, I befriended this shy, mousy girl named Mickey. Not her real name, but everyone called her that, so let's go with it here. I asked Mickey over to our house, my grandparents, a few times to play. We played dress up with my My Size Barbie and played with makeup at my grandma's large vanity. My family thought she was sweet and polite. Well, Mickey is one of four kids, two other girls and a much older brother who I was told to stay away from because he's mean. Not sure what that meant, but I read after high school he was arrested for something. Anyway, Mickey must have told her sisters how much fun she had, and so when I asked her over a third time, her mom claimed they were jealous, so Mickey couldn't come over unless they got to as well. I say claimed because it became pretty obvious this was her mom trying to use our playdates as free babysitting, so she could go out with her husband. Now, I didn't know her sisters at all, but I wanted to play with Mickey, so I told my grandparents it was okay. Boy, was I wrong. Her sisters were awful. The older one was like 10, way too old really to be interested in playing with us. Even at my young age, I knew this was weird. The younger was 5, my brother's age, and a complete terror. She once disappeared in our house and took us 20 minutes to find her in a closed clothes hamper we used for mittens. She said she wanted to play hide and seek but told no one. It became apparent why Mickey was so quiet around anyone but me. They bullied her constantly and I hardly got any time with her. The worst part was though, they would literally fight over my toys when we tried to play anything. It would get so bad, I would have to sneak out of my room and get my grandma to break it up. My My Size Barbie had to be hid in my grandparents' closet whenever they came over so they wouldn't fight over her. I would literally beg my grandma not to let the sisters come over with Mickey, but the mom refused to let Mickey come without them. This continued on for a few months and their mom would literally call us for a play date anytime she would want to go out, and was constantly late picking them up too, like by hours. My grandparents had enough, because not only would they basically have to entertain them so they wouldn't destroy my room or fight, but ended up feeding them two free meals because she would be late. They finally put their foot down, that if they wanted any more playdates, 
my aunt, who had kindly befriended the mom, would bring me over to their house and watch us, but nothing more at our house. So my aunt would take me over to their house and I would try to play with Mickey as much as I could while my aunt kept the other two busy. Her mom would only leave mac and cheese, hot dogs, and Kool-Aid for my aunt to make us. Every time. I'm convinced that's all they ever ate. By midsummer, though, my aunt and their mom had a falling out. From my understanding, it was because she felt Mickey's mom was taking advantage of her kindness, which she was. In August to make it up to us, the mom invited me to sleep over at their house. We didn't know what to expect, since I had never been there by myself. But the night started out uneventful. Mickey's family had lived in a farmhouse with three mares, and apparently a few weeks before they had purchased this huge, wildly dangerous black Mustang they named Tonka. They had bought him to breed with the mares, but anytime he got close to them, he'd attack them. They had him penned separate from the mares, and we were told to stay out of his pen. We spent the evening playing in the field with the mares until it got dark. That's when it started to get weird. Now, as I said, they lived in an old farmhouse, and all the kids slept in this room upstairs. Three beds for the girls, and an open enclave for the brother who didn't even get home till late that night, only knew because I heard him come in. Now, the room was a complete disaster. You couldn't even see the floor, because it was covered in clothes, toys, and garbage, easily up to my seven-year-old knees. Now, you would think that they would offer me a bed or something, but nope. The mom literally cleared away a small spot for me on the floor, big enough for only my sleeping bag. I barely slept that night because I was afraid I was going to get buried in the mess or a mouse or whatever else was living in it would run across me. Got up to use the bathroom and nearly fell first because I kept sinking into it. The next morning, after breakfast of sugary cereal, Mickey asked if just us two could feed the horses. Not a smart idea for two small seven-year-olds without supervision, but the mom said yes without much thought, except stay out of Tonka's pen. We fed the mares without any problems and had fun doing it, but when we got to Tonka's pen, we found that the older sister had left his food tray inside the pen. To a seven-year-old, Tonka is massive, and I'm already scared of him. Mickey tells me it's okay, she'll get the tray, but I remind her that her mom told her to stay out of his pen. She said she had done it lots of times and slipped between the bars of the pen. As she bends down to pick up the tray, I watch in horror as Tonka bends down and bites down hard on Mickey's tiny shoulder, causing her to shriek in pain. He lifts her off the ground at least a few feet and then drops her to the ground. I take off to the house crying and screaming, Help! Tonka bit Mickey! Tonka bit Mickey! Her mom and her dad who had just got home from work rush out of the house. They immediately call my family to come get me before rushing Mickey to the ER. But my family, especially my grandparents, who used to own horses, were livid. They couldn't believe that anyone could be so reckless to keep such a dangerous wild Mustang around young children, let alone let us both go out to feed it by ourselves. Mickey ended up being fine, just needed some stitches, but I was completely traumatized from witnessing it that it took me years before I was comfortable being around horses at all. To top it off, Mickey's mom tried to set up another playdate at their house a few weeks later, claiming they sold Tonka, so it was safe now. But my family refused to let me play at Mickey's again. Much to my dismay, when school started again in September, I found out that Mickey's mom pulled both Mickey and her older sister out of school, claiming they were being bullied or something like that, so that was the end of our friendship. A few years later, she lets the youngest come back to school, but she refuses to talk to me and my brother, who is in the same grade at the time. Said she started bullying other kids. She only lasted a few more years and then drops out. A few months ago, I came across Mickey's profile on Facebook. She accepted my friend request, but never responded to any of my messages on Messenger and hardly posts. So that's that. I'd like to catch up, but I'm not going to try if she's not interested. Sorry for the super long post. If you're still reading this, thank you. I know it's a lot to unpack. You know, OP, I'm betting the time that you spent with Mickey to her was a wonderful reprieve from her siblings and her horrible parents. I'd try contacting Mickey again, but you can't force her into a friendship, obviously. I do wish the best for Mickey, though. And OP, I wish the best for you because you are a gem. Even at seven years old, you seem to have your head screwed on properly. I can only imagine how much further you've come since then. Our last story today comes to us from Foxy Freckles 1989. I am the manager and you need to leave forever. Let's jump right in. 
To set the scene, I was the manager of an outdoor pool years ago that resembled a small water park, and this pool was in the valley of the upper class region in Colorado Springs. The pool had several water slides with weight and height requirements, a decently long and winding lazy river, one of those mushrooms that pour water all along the edge, and a structure in the zero entry portion of the pool that was meant for smaller children that wore red wristbands. A red wristband meant that a child was either under the age of five or unable to pass a swim test, both of which meant that a parent or guardian had to be within arm's reach of the kid wearing the red wristband at all times. This is pertinent to the story. It was the beginning of the season and a solid one-third of my lifeguards were 16 to 17 year olds working their first jobs that had also just graduated a lifeguard course I'd co-taught. This detail is important. It'll be good to remember later that many of my guards were extremely green and had never made an actual rescue before. They were well-trained and competent. It was a Saturday morning, most patrons were pass holders and could come and go as they pleased. The problem family of the morning held no such pass and had to pay at the door for two children and one adult. Problem dad tried to send his kids through to the locker rooms without paying for them, which wasn't a great start to his day. He said he didn't realize kids weren't free and the front desk girl let him in. Both children ended up wearing red wristbands. Problem Dad threw a mini fit when the girl at the front desk told him he'd have to be within arm's reach of his small kids at all times, but conceded and entered the pool area. Problem Dad was on my radar within an hour for attempting to allow both of his kids to go down a slide reserved for green wristbands. He also walked away from his kids several times to be whistled at by a guard and shooed back to his kids that were always in the water. He was given a final warning by one of my head guards and told he'd have to leave if he broke a rule again. Next thing I know, I hear the long whistles that indicate a guard is jumping into the water to make a rescue. I see the other guards shift stations like they're supposed to, and a head guard go get the AED, first aid kit, and my attention to call 911. They're working like a well-oiled machine. I speed walk to the point of the rescue, just in time to see one of my brand new guards pulling a five-year-old boy out of the lazy river. He's alone. I immediately recognize that he belongs to Problem Dad and look around for him. No sooner than I spot him do I realize he is pissed. The guard that pulled the kid out of the lazy river has lied him down on the concrete and he's coughing up water, but is fine. The head guard tries to help him up, but the dad rips him out of that guard's hands and starts screaming at and downright berating my 17-year-old guard that made the rescue. He can swim just fine. What are you doing? You scared him crapless. Are you stupid? I have absolutely zero tolerance for bullying, let alone for a grown man screaming at a kid for doing their job. So I immediately step in and tell him to calm down. He turns his attention towards me, gives me a quick head-to-toe once-over, and demands the manager. I didn't wear makeup to this job, am fair-skinned with red hair and freckles, and was wearing a guard suit with guard shorts instead of manager clothes, because I had been filling in for a head guard during their lunch. I looked about 20 and still do now at 32. Nevertheless, I was in charge. I am the manager, sir. Ha! The real manager? Someone that can legally buy a beer? Where is he? I am the only manager, I am 26 years old, and I am in charge of everything here. He went on to claim he'd been mere feet from his son and was about to help him since he was struggling when the girl over there jumped in and caused a scene, scaring him. I'd not seen the rescue from the start, so I asked the head guard what happened, though I already knew. He told me the boy was fully submerged in the current of the lazy river, and if the guard hadn't jumped in, he'd have likely been getting CPR as we spoke. I looked back at Problem Dad and said he owed my guard an apology and a thank you. He snorted and told me that wasn't going to happen, so I told him he was no longer welcome in my pool. He threw a big fit, this time demanding a refund and threatening to get me fired and calling us all names and I refused the refund and walked right on his heels until he was through the facility and out the front door, where he continued to yell and I called the cops. They came fast, as this wasn't a terribly uncommon occurrence at our affluent pool. He was trespassed and he ruined any chance of summer pool fun for his kids that year. 
I told the cops to talk to him about dry drowning and to insist his kids see a doctor and wipe my hands of the situation. When I made it back inside, the girl who'd made the rescue was having a full-blown panic attack in the guard room. She was sobbing, saying she had no clue how she saved him, that the man was right and she was an idiot and more. I comforted her and told her that her training kicked in and she did everything she was supposed to do, potentially saving the kid's life. I gave her the rest of the day off. I bought her some nachos and a soda. The next weekend, we did an in-service based on Lazy River Rescues and my green little guard was awarded Lifeguard of the Month, which she and her mom bragged about all summer. Problem Dad called to complain about me to my manager, who'd read my incident report and was promptly told he should be glad his kids didn't die. The wristband protocol that lifeguards have final say in safety measures at all times, and that the little girl manager had final say in trespassing him. The end. OP mentioned in the comments down below that that dad wasn't even the worst of the summer, just one of the first. Well OP, you have the patience of a saint. It also sounds like you have a very well-trained, well-oiled team. Congratulations on that. Check out all three OPs linked in the description down below. I thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow.